Howard here with Slave by the Rolling Stones from the Tattoo You album. Uh, this is really just a kind of jam track, right? It's just got a few riffs in it and they just jam it out for something like over six minutes. So it's really, really loose. Even though it does have three sort of distinctive parts, it's just played a really loose, okay? So it's a pretty simple tune to play, but it's also a lot of fun. And I laid it down with a little drum program just to uh, kind of milk the groove a little bit if you know what I mean. So let's get right to it, okay? You can see the tab up on the screen, but uh, there's a little bit of muting going on back here. So the first finger is just coming off and on on that second fret on the A string, right? But it's basically just a B power chord. But right out the gate, the first finger is off. It's open, okay? So you're gonna go back and forth between the open A string and the fretted A string at the second fret. So we want to play again with that muting back here and then faster. Open, on, open, on, open. So we have then move to the sixth string at the second fret and then open. Those are single notes, okay? And then we hit an E power chord one five chord and we play that same groove no finger coming off or on or whatever but you want to mute tightly back here we want to make those chords sound as tight and in the pocket as possible so what we have right now is and then we're going to form an inverted D chord this is standard stones practice right here but first Form the A chord. We're barring the B, the G, and the D string at the second fret. And what you want to do with a downstroke is hammer into that inverted D chord, which will be the second finger at the third fret on the B string, and the ring finger hammering up to the fourth fret on the D string. And really what you're connecting to primarily there is just the D and the G string, and then with an upstroke, bringing the B string into it and just hitting as many strings as you happen to hit. And then back to the A chord, but this time bring in the open A string as well. And that's what you hear right when the guitar enters for the first time. And then you can see that I went right back to the B power chord without that open finger out the gate and just continue the riff from there. And I put down a variation because it's very loose the way this is played. Most of the time it's played the way I did the first one. That's what you're going to hear most of the time, but like on that second one we hear. So I've included that on the tab and of course you can mess with this any way you want to. Uh, just keep it loose and uh, fun. But it's the same chords, right? It's the same hammer to the D and back, but we're just playing. And then from that open A string. So that's a nice little uh, variation if you want to toss it in there. And you 
just continue on from there, right? That kind of covers your verses. And then what we have to deal with is the uh, chorus, which is played like this. <laughs> So that's the way I like to play the chorus. Once again, they keep it really loose, but that's basically what you're hearing the guitar doing. We've got a full B chord, and then the single notes to the open E string. So once again, slowly. And then we've got an E chord up here at the seventh fret as well. And that, I just kind of just keep it loose. Play whatever you want to play, really, but I like to incorporate that E string into it, kind of a Jimmy Page approach or whatever. <laughs> Just do whatever you want on that part. And there's a bass line that you hear in there, which is really cool. And even though the guitar doesn't play that, um, it's pretty cool to add it, uh, double the bass if you want to, before you go back to the verse. It just sounds really cool to me, or you can just stay on the E chord. It doesn't matter either way. Uh, but you play this twice. So on the third one, I like to play. Again, you can just stay on the E chord if you want to. Either way is totally fine, but it's kind of fun to add that in there if you want to. There's a third riff that you're going to hear, which is all related to what we've already done. And it's the riff that you hear leading into the uh, sax solo. And it continues underneath the sax solo for a little while. And uh, that riff is played like this. <laughs> So you can see it's the same idea. It's the hammering from the A to the D chord and it's played slowly, just like so. And what I do is two down strokes followed by an upstroke catching that B string. Then the A chord without the open A string, just the uh, three strings, B, G, and D. So you hit the chord and then an upstroke, open it up, and land an E chord. So what happens when you land the E chord is you're basically just connecting with the top two or three strings, meaning the sixth, the fifth, and maybe the fourth. And then swing with an upstroke to grab the first two or three strings. And muting again helps out a lot with that. So uh, really slowly we have... And the timing on this is one, two, three, two, three, two, three. Pretty cool little riff, and I really like where they put it inside the groove. just a really fun song to play. It's a great little pocket, like I keep saying, and uh, just fun to jam on, which is really what they're doing. There's a little bit of lead at the end of the song, just some jammy stuff, and you can put all of that right around your B 
B minor pentatonic and blues scale. <laughs> You know, just have fun, jam out with it, just uh, play whatever comes to mind, okay? Anyway, that's Slave from the Stones. I hope you enjoyed it uh, from Tattoo You. Uh, another really good album from those guys. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see everybody real soon.